click on the new part to make a new part file, use right click on the empty space on the ribbon and choose primitives. This have box primitive, use a center point and now you can enter a parameter. Enter the name of the parameter using underline between two words, then place an equal sign and assign the value. Use Tab key to switch to another input field and enter the next parameter. Again, the same story, the name, equal sign and the value. When you click Enter, you are switched to the extrude mode, which allows you to define the height of the box. Use symmetric extrusion in order to have a work plane in the middle. Now you can use a view group to define where is the front. Use right click on the right orientation and choose set current view as front. Use right click again and set current view as home. Make some work planes on a box. Now you can use this newly created work plane as a reference to make a new work plane in the middle between those two surfaces. This work plane will be used like a divider, uh, like a horizontal divider. Now we can enter some other parameters which will be used in the next steps, like a panel thickness, which will be equal to 18 millimeters. The next one will be uh, the back plate thickness. Since it will be made of the plywood, the thickness of it will be 4 millimeters. Now we can switch to the skeleton dress up top and use dress up tool in order to apply the panels on the box. So as you can see all the faces were selected. You can hold Ctrl key pressed and click on the surface to remove selection. So we did this on the front. Now we can use a parameter to define the thickness of the backplate. The work planes can be used to make the panels too. Select the work planes and choose the, the panel thickness value. Again, select the skeleton body, the work plane, panel thickness value, and switch the offset position to the middle. Now we can do the same to the bottom work plane. That's it. So now we have a closed box covered by the panels. We can save the project in our workspace so we can make a new file like a closet with a code rack and give some descriptive name. Now we can use a visibility control skeleton to hide some skeleton objects. Then the direct tool can be used in order to define the size of some of the objects or move them. In this case we are switching to the move option and then defining the position of the bottom of the bottom board. Okay, it's on a place. Now we can move the back plate in the same way. Choose the back plate in the move mode and set its new position. Now as you can see the back plate is synced inside of the model. Okay. It's time to use a trim tool. Select the panel you want to trim and select the boundary object. And as you can see, we have the plane. Now we can do the same with the, the vertical and horizontal panels. The same story here. It's important uh, where you click on the panel. If you click on the bottom part of the panel that you want to trim, then this part will be kept. And then we can basically continue the same workflow, choosing what you want to trim and by what this panel must be trimmed. Okay. So, 
Now uh, we can utilize the same technology to uh, adjust the separators. So let's trim the top and the bottom panels and the same will be done for the next one. Okay, so you can visually check if there is any intersections and we have, we still have one. So we can easily fix it by using the same technology. That's it. And now we need to deal with the back plate. Use a direct tool. And then we need to reduce the size of the back plate a little bit. So now we switch the direct tool option to move faces, not the solids. Then we can define how far it goes. We can measure it from the external edge and use the panel thickness divided by two as a reference parameter. So when we use the half of the panel thickness, it always will react to the changes in the model. The changes in the model. If you will define another thickness, the groove will and the panel will react to these changes. The same happens on the opposite side, like so. And since the groove of the panel will go all the way down, we will leave this back plate a bit bigger than it should be. Since we will use the back plate as a boundary object. So as you can see, we will trim the side panels by the back plate. Very nice. Now the direct tool can be used again. When the groove is already on the place, we can reduce the size of the back plate because we need to, to have a groove on the top and the back and the bottom panel as well. The same parameter, you can copy it to use it in the next steps. There's one more thing to do to deal with the bottom of the back plate. Again, the direct tool helps you. You can choose measure, measure from and define the reference point. Okay, perfect. So since the back plate is in the right size, we need to do the grooves on the remaining panels on the top and on the bottom. Use trim, select panels to trim, like that, and then the boundary object. That's it. So now you can use a shift and right click to choose a component priority and switch it to the body mode. Then you can click on the back plate and switch it visibility off. So this allows you to see what happens inside of the model. Also, you can control visibility of the bodies from the browser. Good practice to use some descriptive names for the solids a bit routine, but the names of the solids will be used in the future steps when we will generate a file. This will be descriptive names and the codes will be applied later during the design process. Okay, finally we have our right names. Now we can use the same technology, use shift and right click to choose a body priority and we can use hide others by clicking on the backplate. What it will do, it will hide remaining components but the backplate. Now use the project geometry, switch this geometry to the construction and use an offset. We want to shrink the size of the backplate. So for this purpose, the extrude command will be used. Now we can use the intersect option, which will go all the way through the backplate. What it does, it lefts only the geometry which is inside of the contour. So you can use right click again, choose show all to show all the components. And then on the browser, the fine tuning can be applied. So we can hide some of the object if you want, if you want to. So now we can see how does it looks like. 
we have some gap between the back plate and a groove. So that's what we want to achieve. Now we can use shift and right click again to choose faces priority. Then when you click on the face, the sketch will be one of the options that you can do. Click on the new sketch and then project the geometry of the selected faces. This geometry should be marked as the construction lines. Then draw a rectangle. This will be the shelf. So the shelf will be made of the same material as the remaining panels, the same material as the remaining panels, and it will have some offset from the side, since this shelf will be adjustable. In order to have some options to adjust its size, we want to have the spacing between the side and the shelf itself. Then the size of the shelf should be defined as a parameter panel thickness. And there is some more questions. Where the shelf should be positioned and how many of them we will have. So let's define a parameter shelf quantity, which will be measured in unitless. Okay, and then we will define the, size, the amount of the shelves. So the next parameter is the distance between them. Okay. How are we going to measure it? First, we need to take a measure from the size of the niche. We can just apply the driven dimension. Click Escape, use right click, and choose dimension properties. So here we can define the name for the driven dimension, which can be used in the parameters, in the equations. That's it. Space for shells. We can just copy this value, then open a parameter, editor, and then we can use it in our equation. So we can just use brackets, subtract the shelf quantity, multiply it by the thickness of the shell. You can use a parameter list. Okay, and now we have just a clean size of the area without the shelf itself. So to know what is the distance, we need to divide this by shelf quantity plus one, since we're dividing it by amount of spacings. And we will always get one more spacing than amount of shells. And that's it. So we can use this value in the sketch. Okay, perfect. So close the sketch. And now we can use inventor functionality. So there is no limitation. You can use just a regular extrusion like you would normally do with Vanilla Inventor, and that's it. So the color of the panel is different, different because it was made by Inventor Tools. Now we can use a Direct to just uh, reduce the size of the shelf a little bit by the panel thickness, minus 2. Why are we doing this? Since there will be a door, so we want to ensure that the door will be able to close. Now make another sketch, project the geometry, okay, you can use a zoom if you want, sometimes it's a bit tricky to catch the right line, so we can zoom it if you want, and now we will project a contour of the spacer 2. Why? Since we will make the contours of the door as well as the contour of the drawer. Okay, like that. Just the two rectangles. Now finish the sketch, apply extrude command, 
like that. Make a new solid body. That's it. Now this sketch was already used. So we can make it visible again in the browser. Then extrude it again. Like a new solid body. It's very important to use a new solid body when you do an extrusion. Since each solid body will be converted to a part. Okay, so now let's make a sketch on the door. Project its geometry. You guess it right, set it to be construction, and use an offset. Since we want to make sure that the door will be, uh, will be possible to open, we want to have some gap between the door and the body. Finish body. Finish the sketch, make an extrusion with the intersect option for this selected object. Like that. So now we have some spacing and we will be able to open the door. The same happens with the drawer. So we have some offset. Now we can use extrude, intersect, and that's it. So now we can hide other components, but leaving only a front of the drawer. Use shift and right click and choose a new sketch. So here we can project the geometry of the drawer, select it and make a rectangle. Okay, so this rectangle will be used for the eye box in the next steps. So we have the same spacing from the top and from the bottom as well. So we can use the value as a reference. Once it's done, the other components can be shown. Then you can use extrusion since we have only one close profile. There is no need to select something and uh, just define how far the body of the drawer will go. It will go to the back plate. Now we have some new solids and it's logical to give them the names as we did already in the previous steps. This will be the drawer facade. And that will be the drawer concept. That's it. So this is how our final concept file looks like. And we are ready to go for the next steps.